This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and helpful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. We've delayed a few minutes getting started, as I think you were told, because of the apparent traffic jam out on Ala Moana Boulevard. But now is our time. I'd like to welcome you all to the monthly meeting of the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. The Vegetarian Society is a not-for-profit volunteer organization founded in 1990 for the pr purpose of promoting human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education. We are the largest local vegetarian society in the country with more than 1,500 members. Our members receive an informative and educational newsletter, discounts at vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores including Down to Earth and Huckleberry Farms. This benefit alone more than covers your membership fee. And you'll also be supporting meetings like this and the vegetarian movement in Hawaii. We're delighted to have with us tonight Dr. Joel Furman. Dr. Furman is a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and is a board-certified family physician based in New Jersey. He specializes in preventing and reversing disease through nutritional and natural methods. He's a former world-class figure skater and a member of the United States World Figure Skating Team. His dedication to sports medicine, health and fitness, and preventive care and medicine speak to these lifelong interests. Dr. Furman has spoken at over 100 locations throughout the United States and Canada and has been on numerous television and radio shows. His appearances include Good Morning America, The Today Show, The Food Network, CNN, and the Discovery Channel. He's the author of the recent best-selling book, Eat to Live, The Revolutionary Plan for Fast and Sustained Weight Loss, available at the book table tonight. Please welcome Dr. Joel Furman. Okay, great to be here and see you all here tonight. The theme of the presentation tonight is that superior health is in your grasp and disease is not the inevitable consequence of aging. Disease is something you had to earn through wrong living. And the information, if you put into action tonight, nobody need die of a heart attack anymore. We can do, we, right now in our country today, we have 52% of our population dying of heart attacks and strokes. 52%, that's more than all the other causes of death combined. With diabetes and cancers and, and heart disease, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, allergies, sinus infections. We have constipation, hemorrhoids, diverticulosis. We have one disease after another, the product of nutritional ignorance and nutritional stupidity. And as a result of this most recent scientific information that I've collected from reviewing more than 50,000 medical research studies, culling out the 1,500 that are referenced in my book, Eat to Live, and applying them to make a diet style that's most effective and delicious will, will enable people to live 20 to 40 years longer and do away with these diseases that afflict Americans. We all do, together, have an unprecedented opportunity in human history. This opportunity available to all of us. We can live much longer than ever before. 
We can live without the fear of disease, without the fear of heart attacks hanging over your head like a dagger ready to be released at any minute. You can enjoy your life free of the fear of losing your mental function as you age, free of the fear of having a stroke, free of the fear of getting cancer. 90% of physicians in hospitals could go out of business because the body essentially has built in its own biological code the ability to retain health and restore yourself to health when given the chance through nutritional excellence. So Eat to Live was written to be marketed as a book for people who are overweight wanting to lose weight. Wanting to lose weight in the safest manner possible. A way that will have them be thinner and achieve superior health at the same time. But really, it's not a weight loss book. It's really a book for every person, myself included, who wants to know and wants to achieve health excellence. It's not just for those who are overweight. Why do I eat this way? I'm not overweight. I want to age gracefully, maintain my youthful vigor. I want to be able to be active and play tennis and ski and do sports with my children. I don't, want to get, I don't want to lose my mental faculties as I age. I don't want to have a heart attack looming over my head. And I want to enjoy eating. I want to enjoy eating as much food as I want. Who wants to carry around a calculator and a scale, measuring out thimble-sized portions of food, worrying about your weight all the time? The point is, when you eat healthfully, your weight takes care of itself, and the weight will just drop off you until you achieve your ideal weight. My Eat to Live program has been studied, extensively studied. Most recently, it was investigated by the University of Southern California, who reviewed the patient records of 200 charts from my office. And they found that the average patient lost 49 pounds and maintained that 49 pound weight loss over a two year period. That was more weight loss than any study we've ever done in medical history. So, Sure, if you want to lose weight, this is the safest and most effective way to do it. And if you're of normal weight, there's, there, has to be, there has to be held up an ideal way to eat that will afford you the opportunity to live as long as possible, free of the fear of diseases, and to reverse diseases like diabetes and arthritis and allergies and asthma and heart disease, if you have it already. Right now, we have the most overweight population in the history of the human race we have about 70% of our population is overweight and about 30% are obese. Obviously, the heavier you are, the shorter your lifespan. And the thinner you are, the longer you live. One thing that's very solid in today's science is that the thinnest people live the longest. When you're leaner, you have much lower risks of heart disease and lower risks of cancer. But let's just, let me start at the beginning here. I mentioned already that, that over 50% of Americans die of heart attacks and strokes, and about 35% people die of cancer. Nobody need die of a heart attack. We can get rid of all these heart attack deaths. So here's what Americans are eating today to earn these dismal statistics. We have 42% of calories from animal products in the American diet. 42%. 23% of the total, or more than half of the 42%, are dairy products. As animal products increase in a nation's diet in a pop, or in a population, we see the risks of both cancer and heart disease and stroke go up accordingly. The food element that's most dangerous or most closely linked with heart disease and cancer is saturated fat. The food that contributes more saturated fat to the American diet than any other food are dairy products. Dairy products, an ounce of white meat chicken or white meat turkey might contain a couple of ounces, two or three ounces of saturated fat. But the same amount of cheese or butter might contain 10 to 20 grams of saturated fat, usually five to 10 times as much. There's no contest, way in, far and above all of the sources of saturated fat, America's love affair with dairy products and our brainwashing by the dairy industry and by the advertising media has distilled into people's minds that drinking milk and eating dairy is health food and in fact it's the number one cause of all heart disease and cancers in this country. On top of that, on top of this huge consumption of animal products, high, highest in almost any country in the world, 
we, now we also have 51% of calories in the American diet from processed foods. Foods like pasta, white bread, Danish donuts, English muffins, bagels, salad oils, olive oil, canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, mayonnaise, donuts, cookies, crackers, rice cakes, puff cereals, soft drinks, breakfast bars, chips and pretzels. Those processed foods are mostly what Americans are living on. That's over 50% of the American diet. Just like there is a, an excellent correlation in more than 15,000 different studies showing as animal products go up in a nation's diet, so do heart disease and cancer. We're seeing the same thing is true with more than 1,500 studies now with processed foods like sugar and white flour and oil. As, those in, as the processed foods go up, so do both heart disease and cancer. Americans only eat 7% of calories from unrefined plant food. But don't be fooled. Half of that 7% is white potatoes. That's, so it's closer to 3 to 4% of fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts and seeds that Americans eat. Those are the foods with the most powerful levels of antioxidant nutrients, vitamins and minerals, phytochemicals, flavonoids, lignans. In other words, there's no vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin K, folate. There's no phytochemicals and bioflavonoids and carotenoids in animal products and there's none in processed foods either. Both animal products and processed foods are low nutrient foods. They don't contain the health supporting nutrients you need to protect yourself against disease. The foods that have those nutrients in them, we'd hardly eat at all. I'll repeat them what, they're, what they are again. They're vegetables, fruits, beans, and nuts and seeds. We have an epidemic of diabetes in this country. Isn't that astonishing that the average American consumes about 32 teaspoons of sugar a day? And eating these refined grains like pasta and white bread, people have been given false information to think that eating a nice low-fat meal of pasta or white rice is healthy for you. It's not. Those foods are associated with both breast, with breast cancer, colon cancer, and stomach cancer. They're also linked, obviously, to diabetes and heart disease. Pasta is not health food. We, can't, we have to consider when we eat white flour, the body views it much the way it would be if you just ate a bowl of white sugar. There's almost no nutrients to support that food. When we take in calories without nutrients to support it, it has a biological effects on our cells, which makes the cells congested. They become unable to keep themselves clean, and disease starts to occur. So refined foods are linked to most of the cancers and heart disease. This is an important slide. It looks at people from around the world in the age group of 55 to 75 where most people die and looking at what they die of. The red bar represents the people that die of heart disease and cancer and stroke added together. And you can see there's the United States. The second line, way up there. And the blue bar represents the amount of unrefined plant foods. In other words, when you looked at what populations ate by food consumption data put out by the World Health Organization, this slide took me a year to collect the data on every country in the world, what they ate and what the people died of at that age bracket. And we found it made a direct correlation with every single country that the more unrefined plant food, fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts and seeds, those populations ate, we saw both heart disease and cancer and strokes drop down accordingly. So much so that when we cross the 90% line, Americans don't forget consume about 3.5 to 4% of calories from, uh, from fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts and seeds. But there are populations that consume 80 and 90% of those foods. When we cross those lines, we see essentially heart disease and cancers hardly occur. Does everybody understand this slide? The first one's hungry, yes. It's spelt wrong. Sorry about that. I guess they're, they're very hungry in Hungary. I can't fix it because the, the guy did the slide for me. I like, hand wrote it in, so I can't correct it on the computer. When you put an animal in a cage and you let that animal eat all the food it wants, it'll live X amount of years. 
But if you take those, that same genetically bred species and you feed it just 70% of what the first animal ate, in other words, you feed it 30% less calories, we find that second group of animals will live 1.5 to 2x. It'll live almost twice as long. The only thing ever proven in science, and I use the word proven very carefully here, the only thing ever proven, which means reproducible in hundreds of studies and every scientist all over the world who tested this theory, to significantly extend lifespan of all species of animals is eating less calories in a high nutrient environment. So how can we do that? And could we do that? Could we eat less calories and more nutrients simultaneously? Because this has been shown to increase lifespan and, per, and stop the aging process or, or significantly slow down the aging process in primates as well. And we're primates. We can see color, we can taste sweet, we have the opposing thumb. We're very much designed like a gorilla or chimpanzee. How can we possibly eat less calories and more nutrients? Wouldn't we need to eat more food and more calories to get more nutrients? The secret is eating more foods that are higher in nutrients. In order to do that, you have to know what foods those are that are high in nutrients. So let me ask you, what food do you think wins the gold medal, the number one prize for the food richest in nutrients? Vitamin E, C, K, folate, fiber, bioflavonoids, phytochemicals. Which foods give you the most nutrients per calorie on the planet? Does anybody know? Right, the answer is green vegetables. Green vegetables are the foods that are extremely low in calories. They're like taking vitamin pills. So H equals N over C means your health can be predicted by the nutrient per calorie density of your diet. When you eat a diet rich in nutrients, you protect your body from most of the diseases that drive people to doctor's offices. The secret here is to eat lots of food that's high in nutrients and lower in calories. To do that and to apply these principles, we have to know the nutritional density of all foods so we can try to eat more food that's rich in nutrients and we can try to eat less food that's lower in nutrients. And that works perfectly well because the more foods you eat that are rich in nutrients, the less you're going to desire to overeat, the less you're going to crave and develop those addictive sens sensations. When you eat less food, less calories in general, it delays the onset of diseases. It stops the atherosclerotic process. You don't develop atherosclerosis in your blood vessels. That results from overeating. The excess calories you consume that your body didn't need feeds diseases. We need a certain amount of calories and a certain amount of nutrients. But on, a, on an ancient Egyptian pyramid was the statement, man lives on two-thirds of what he eats. On the other one-third feeds his doctor. You see, there are receptors and nutrient receptors in our stomach and our digestive tract that can sense the nutrient density of everything we eat. When we take in lots of fiber and lots of nutrients, the brain gets a sense, gets feedback to tell your brain, your hypothalamus, that you've had enough food. When you put a lot of empty calories in your stomach, there's no feedback loop to the brain and you're driven to overeat and you feel hungry all the time. The key to not overeating and to feeling satiated and so you don't feel like eating unnecessary food that you didn't need is to fill up on nutrient-rich food. This program is all about eating more food than you're eating right now. Very few people in this room are eating enough of those foods that will give you the nutrients to arm your body against disease. We have to eat more green vegetables, more beans, more eggplants and mushrooms and tomatoes and peppers and, in other words, and cauliflower and all these high nutrient foods we have to consume more of. And that will essentially arm your body with all these very powerful phytochemicals and make your body, a, and give your body a protective armor to protect you against cancer and toxins in our environment. There are poisonous substances and toxic material in, in natural foods too. And they were there 50,000 years ago. That's okay. Your body has the ability to repair cells, to repair DNA damage. 
Your body is a self-healing, self-repairing machine. Even a normal cell, when it starts to get damaged and become, the, become dysplastic or the early, get the early stages of cancer, when you have breaks in your DNA, your body has the mechanism to repair those broken links and put the cell back to a normal state again if you give it high levels of these phytochemical nutrients that are present in the colorful fruits and vegetables. A high phytochemical diet prevents cancer and in certain cases can reverse dysplasia and even reverse cancer. You can't get high levels of these can cancer fighting nutrients from vitamin pills. You have to get them from eating lots of the right kind of food. Most of them haven't been discovered yet, but for, when you look at some carotenoids that are very crucial, to, a very powerful anti-cancer effects, we find that green vegetables have a between 20 and 25,000 micrograms of these nutrients. And that's just one of the nutrients. Can you imagine if, if all of America ate two to three cups of green vegetables a day? We'd see the cancer rate drop in half in a period of a few years. Green vegetables are so powerfully rich in nutrients that when we compare them to animal products, they contain 300 times as much of even the nutrients that are in animal products. But of course, animal products don't contain the nutrients that are in green vegetables. And look at that, look at the protein content in the first line. You notice it says protein is, in broccoli is about 12 grams and in sirloin steaks about 5 grams. I ask people all the time, what do you think has more protein, 100 calories of broccoli or 100 calories of steak? And even doctors and dietitians and scientists will say to me, oh, I didn't even know broccoli had protein. And I say to them, well, how do you think the cow got the protein to put in to make its muscle tissue? Did you think it just breathed it in from the air? Don't you realize that most animals ate, ate greens to get the protein? You didn't think the cow shoved its hoof into the soil and sprouted roots directly and sucked up the nitrogen right through the soil, did you? But keep in mind, here's an important point here, is that calories only come from three things. Fat, carbohydrate, and protein. There's only three sources of calories. So if you didn't think broccoli was mostly protein, then you must have thought it was carbohydrate, like a potato. Or do you think it was fat, like an olive or avocado mostly? In other words, since there are only three sources of macronutrients, vegetable, all foods are some mix of those three nutrients, fat, carbohydrate, and protein. Broccoli is about 60% protein. Meat, sirloin steaks, about 24% of calories from protein. It's about 70% of calories from fat. So steak is mostly fat, and broccoli is mostly protein. That's how come all animals on the face of the earth, from the lion or the tiger to the Tyrannosaurus rex, got their protein from green vegetables. They either had to eat the greens directly, or they had to eat an animal who ate the greens. But all the protein on the planet came from the action of sunlight and soil through, up through plants, making proteinaceous and nitrogenous compounds for animals to eat. You understand that concept? So green grass made the lion indirectly through the antelope or the zebra. Now Americans are eating too much protein. They're eating too much fat and they're eating too many carbohydrates. We have to eat less calories. We have to eat less of all three. Don't get fooled by this nonsense that protein is some nutrient to be held in high esteem and start taking protein powders and protein drinks and, high pro and low carbohydrate this and high protein that. That's just fraudulent information. Your body is getting, most Americans are already protein poisoned by all the animal products they're eating. But they're, co but they're poisoned by excess calories. We're getting too much protein, too much fat, and too many carbohydrates. And the only way to eat less of all three and have a leaner, disease-proof body is to eat a diet that's vegetable-based, not meat-based, and not grain-based. We don't want our diet to be based on flour or white rice or pasta. And we don't want our diet to be based on meat and fish and cheese or eggs, which don't have phytochemicals and, and antioxidants in them either, and are rich in saturated fat and contaminants. So do you know what food has the best association with longevity in humans? Greens. Right. If you're going to win an award, a million dollar prize for going into a supermarket, we have a game show, 
And whoever puts 10,000 calories of most nutrients in their shopping cart is going to win the million dollars. What would you shove into your shopping cart to win the money? All the green... Kale, broccoli, right, Swiss chard, bok choy, peas, all the greens you could find. This is one of my patients six months after following the diet. <laughs> But as I said earlier, we're only 1.8% different from a gorilla and about 1.6% different from a chimpanzee. We have the same digestive tract structure, the same size of a liver, the same secretion of enzymes from the pancreas. We really share a similarity of need for nutrients and all primates eat a, a diet predominantly of green vegetables. We have a huge requirement for nutrients and we have a variety driver primates are not satisfied. A shark can eat fish all day. He'll be happy. A lion can just chew meat up all day. He'll be, he doesn't need a lot of variety. But the animals that live the longest with the bigger brains, with the longest potential for lifespan, eat a variety of food. And we're finding in the scientific investigations that are linked to the humans that live the longest are those humans who ate a broad assortment of natural foods and got the highest concentration and diversity of nutrients, which gorillas and chimpanzees innately go after variety. They don't sit in front of a banana tree and eat bananas all day. They'll eat a few bananas and they'll go a mile and a half away to eat a different food. You have that same variety driver in you. We have to eat a, a diversity of plant foods to give us to maximize human lifespan. Instead of that, though, Americans don't eat much variety. They live predominantly on animal products and pasta and bread and potato and oil. Excuse me, I left out oil. Oil is usually a third of the Ameri or more of the American diet. I mean, a lot of Americans eat a small salad, but they might put... You know, salad is very, leaves of raw leaves are very low in calories. A pound of raw greens is like 60 calories a pound. Throw a little head of, throw a head of iceberg lettuce. Take a quarter of that head, the size salad most Americans eat. It's only about 10 to 12 calories. They throw a little slice of tomato on top, or maybe a few pieces of cucumbers. They only have 15, 20 calories in a bowl. There's not much calories there. But then they throw on two, three to four tablespoons of dressing at 120 calories per tablespoon, mostly made from oil, because they've been told it's health food. They'll throw 500 calories of dressing on a little 20 calorie salad. I'll tell them, forget the salad then, just drink the dressing straight from the bottle. Hmm. But America's Americans are consuming 400 to 800 calories a day just from oil. Oil is not high nutrient food. Remember I told you a few minutes ago, the less empty calories we consume, the longer we live. And the more nutrient rich calories we consume, the longer we live. When we're putting oil all over our food, you're pouring calories without nutrient density. Once you extract the oil from the food that nature made, you've re removed and lost most, most of the nutrients. And the protective flavonoids which prevent the oil from becoming rancid are lost as well. I recommend when people, I don't recommend people eat a particularly low fat diet, but you want the fats to you consume to be nutrient rich. Nuts and seeds are extremely nutrient rich food, but not the oil when we extract it from the nutrient from the nut or seed. I make some phenomenal salad dressings. Instead of pouring oil on the food directly, I'll take maybe a peel, one of my most favorite dressings, I take a peeled orange, I'll mix it with a handful of raw cashew nuts, a sprig of blood orange vinegar, which I sell on my website, a maybe, a, maybe a quarter of lemon squeezed in. So lemon, blood orange vinegar, cashews and, and oranges blended together in the blender of Vitamix made into a creamy dressing. That's an unbelievably delicious dressing. But I have hundreds more of those dressings available to people from all kinds of dressings made with, you know, um, tomato paste and sun-dried tomatoes and almonds and, and chili pa you know, fantastic. You can make salads taste great without putting 500 calories of empty calories on top. Americans are eating a huge amount of cheese in their diet and cheese is full of saturated fat. 
more, in some cases, twice as much as meat. And they'll have cheese three times a day. Butter and cheese at every meal. Then they'll have some dessert, a piece of steak added to that. They'll consume a huge amount of saturated fat. That's literally taking your life in your hands. Fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds have no saturated fat. Even low-fat cheeses are not low in fat, they're just lower in fat than high-fat cheeses, and they still, most, most of that fat is still saturated. So what's the most, what is the food that contributes to more cancers in the American diet than any other food? What's the food that has more saturated fat, and what food does the EPA, what food does the government tell us, transmits more dioxin, PCBs, and poisonous cancer-causing petrochemicals into your body than any other food in the American diet? What do you think that food is? There it is, butter and cheese, dairy products. The most dangerous food in the American diet. If we were going to scientifically design a diet to create cancer, all we have to do is give people more saturated fat, throw some toxins in there, and then restrict their fruit and vegetable intake. Especially restrict the, flav the flavonoids and biochemicals in, fru in fruit to protect against cancer. It's almost as if we've been invaded by a foreign planet out to destroy us. They couldn't design an American diet more scientifically perfect to create an obesity and heart disease and cancer epidemic than if we had planned it from scratch. We could do a little worse, though, if we work really hard. We can give people an Atkins diet. Mm. 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 I mean, this is simply fraudulent information thrust on top of an unsuspecting and ignorant American populace telling them that meat and, and cheese are health foods. Those statements reverse heart disease with filet mignon, stop strokes with cheese, prevent breast cancer with butter. I extracted directly from Atkins inf liter literature and newsletters. Can you imagine if they put that prevent breast cancer with butter on the side of a stick of butter? They wouldn't let them get away with, such, with those kind of lies. But Atkins, for the last 30 years, has been lying to the American public. Certain cancers are exquisitely sensitive to saturated fat. In the, in the 60 gram of fat range found in Atkins menus, that would be, give you six-fold to ten-fold increase of certain cancers. It's really a very foolish way to worry about to, to lose a few pounds, and it doesn't work that good at losing weight anyway. My patients lose around 15 pounds on the average the first month, and about 8 to 10 pounds each month thereafter. They lose spectacular amounts of weight. You don't lose that kind of weight on an Atkins diet. Most patients gain the weight back, and the studies showed that the weight loss they achieved after six months was mostly gained back after one year. Here's an analysis of the Atkins menu directly from his book, Atkins' New Diet Revolution which contains 60 grams of saturated, saturated fat and about 6,000 milligrams of sodium. So if you don't, if you don't get a heart attack first, you'll get a stroke. Atkins had heart disease. He had a heart attack due to a cardiomyopathy. We know that the medical literature, the scientific literature, shows that people on ketogenic or high-protein diets have a high risk of cardiomyopathies. He had an angiogram when he had the heart attack, and it showed that he had significant atherosclerosis. You don't want to model yourself after an unhealthy diet style to lose weight. Trans fats are man-made fats. They're not found in nature. But they're in margarines, french fries, processed foods, chalk cookies, croissants. They're, they have the same danger as, as saturated fats, but Americans don't generally eat the, the volume of trans fats they do of saturated fat. That's why trans fats are not, I don't consider them worse. But if you ate just as much trans fats as saturated fat, you know, they could be, they could be just as bad as saturated fats. When we look, the reason why oil, olive oil, for example, has such a good rep is because the studies compared it to butter and, tra and margarines and other sources of trans fat. I repeat again, that just because olive oil is better than having butter or better than margarine and other types of fats doesn't make it a health food. You can't pour oil all over your food and expect to maintain a healthy weight or live as long as a life possible than if you, were, if you kept those empty calories to minimal amounts. 
There are two types of essential fats. There's omega-6 fat and omega-3 fat. Scientific studies show that excesses of both types of fats increase cancer rates. We do, the American diet has a 25 to 1 ratio between 6 to 3. It's true, we don't eat enough 3 fats because we don't eat green vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds. We eat processed foods, oils, and animal products. So we're taking in too much omega-6 fats. But don't think it's healthy. Just because we ha Americans don't take too much omega-3 fat, don't think it's healthy to start pouring flaxseed oil off everything you're eating and taking flaxseed oil capsules. That's not healthy for you. It's be what's healthy for you is to eat the whole food with all the nutrients that nature put in those high omega-3 fats such as fl ground flax seeds on in, your in your oatmeal or in your banana ice cream that you can make with frozen bananas whipped in the blender or whipped in the Vitamix or the food processor or a little bit of soy milk. Make a fantastic ice cream with a mix little flax seeds on top or throw some frozen strawberries in there. Or eat your green vegetables or soybeans or sunflower seeds or walnuts and you get plenty of omega-3 fat in the whole food. Flax seeds, not flaxseed oil has shown the powerful protection against breast cancer and against prostate cancer. But you don't have to, it's not hard to get these beneficial fats into you when you eat a diet that's well balanced. So obviously, if I was going to design a pyramid, I wouldn't design the USDA pyramid. This pyramid is designed by the American government and puts at the bottom of their pyramid grains 90% of all grains consumed by Americans are white flour products. That's like putting candy bars at the bottom of their pyramid. High calorie, empty nutrient food. These, the USDA and the government's advice, it comes to as a culmination of lobbying and political bartering about what, what the food manufacturers and lobbyists and political areas of the country would like to have in a food pyramid. This is not a scientific statement. These are political and social statements telling people what they want to hear and what, the, and what the political forces want to advertise to you. Can you imagine putting pasta and white flour and sugar and white and cold cereals, which when you cook carbohydrate at high heat, puff cereal like corn flakes, puffed rice, puffed wheat, Cheerios, right, cocoa puffs. When you cook those carbohydrates at high heat, you form cancer-causing compounds called acrylamides. Those are relatively dangerous foods besides the fact they have no, nutri no, no nutrients in them. Even whole grains, even whole wheat bread made from whole wheat flour, is not a high nutrient food, it's a moderate to low nutrient food compared to fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds. But then when we process that moderately low nutrient food and we make it into white flour, we lose another 90% of, we, then we lose 90% of the vitamin E and 95% of the fiber is washed away and 90% of the minerals are taken out. So that white flour product you have is essentially a, just a source of calories with no nutrients to support it. This, the bottom of that pyramid, representing white, white bread and white flour and cold cereals, should be put at the top, at the very top. Not the very bottom. They should turn this pyramid upside down. So what do you think if I was going to do a pyramid? What would I put at the base of my pyramid? Vegetables, obviously. Let's look at this pyramid then. The, the bottom of the pyramid is vegetables, half raw and half cooked. Lots of green vegetables. I encourage people to try to eat more than a pound of green vegetables every day. Don't forget a pound of green vegetables is less than 100 calories. You can eat huge amounts of green vegetables. You can't eat too much. And the more you eat, the thinner you'll get. You can't overeat on vegetables and, and, be, and um, eggplants and mushrooms and peppers and tomatoes. They're so low in calories that they take up room in your stomach. It's like having a gastric bypass surgery. The more you eat of that stuff, you can't fit the other stuff in anymore. Instead of getting a gastric bypass and cutting out 90% of your stomach, fill it up 90% with healthy food. You won't desire the junk food anymore. You won't walk by that bagel and the, the chocolate chip cookie or the donut at work, the potato chips. You won't be craving it. You'll feel full. You'll feel good. You won't be tempted by those foods anymore. You won't get those, that shakiness. You won't get the headaches. You won't get the stomach cramping. Don't forget, hunger is not felt in your head or your stomach. Those are addictive withdrawal symptoms from a toxic diet. 
True hunger is felt in your throat, in your neck, up here. When you're really healthy, hunger takes longer to occur. It, it puts you in touch directly with the exact amount of calories you need. So I can, for example, go on vacation, let's say, and ski all day long or play tennis all day and burn huge amounts of calories, and my hunger will direct me to the exact amount I need to maintain my body weight. I'll know within 25 calories a day how much I have to consume so my weight, so I don't gain or lose one pound or even a half a pound. Or I can see patients in my office for a week straight and do no exercise. And again, my hunger will directly direct me to the precise amount of calories I need so I don't lose or gain one pound. Whether you exercise or not, you can't become overweight when you are in touch with true hunger and you eat the amount of food hunger demands when you're on a high nutrient diet. This is how you all eat the 20 to 30 percent less calories automatically just by eating large amounts of these vegetables that we're supposed to be consuming each day. And then once you get a lot of vegetables in your diet, do you have to worry about consuming enough calcium? Do you have to take a whole bunch of calcium pills? Of course not. Vegetables are super high in calcium. Do you worry about getting not enough protein and not take extra vitamin E, extra vitamin C? What do you need extra? It's already in there when you're eating a high level of these natural foods. So vegetables are at the base, and clearly fruits and beans are next. And whole grains, nuts and seeds are, are an important part. Nuts and seeds are an important part of a healthy diet. Grains are optional. Nuts and seeds are an important part. But nuts and seeds are not at the base because they're very rich in calories. So you don't want to eat an unlimited amount of those foods. Though the foods below that line, you can eat an unlimited amount. Animal products should be considered optional foods that people, so a person could be healthy on a vegetarian diet, eating from the base of the pyramid, or they could be healthy eating a rare animal food, but you are using it as a condiment once in a while, but you can't be on an animal food based diet or get your animal food consumption anywhere near the levels it is in America and expect to have a normal lifespan and to have superior health. As animal products increase in the diet, even from one serving a week, the cancers that afflict Americans begin to increase markedly. It's as if you smoke two cigarettes a day. If you smoke two cigarettes a day, you have a 50% increased risk of heart attack. If you smoke 20 cigarettes a day, your risk only goes up 54%. In other words, there's not much difference between smoking two cigarettes and smoking a whole pack of 20 cigarettes. Same thing is true with animal products. Once you have a sir, a six or seven servings a week. Once you have three to four servings a week, six or seven servings a week, then if you have 21 servings a week, you're already going to have a very high cholesterol even on four to five servings of animal products a week. Some people are very sensitive to low consumption of animal products. A little bit of animal protein, even white meat, chicken, even skim milk, even fish, the, the, even the lower saturated fat animal products can raise your cholesterol into the danger zone for some people that are susceptible. You see, animal protein raises cholesterol, not just the saturated fat. It promotes bone loss because you, the more animal protein you take in, the more calcium you lose in your urine. Plant protein has opposite effects. Plant protein from beans and greens and nuts lowers cholesterol and promotes bone strengths. It's a deficiency of these plant substances that causes you to develop osteoporosis. It's not merely a calcium deficiency. There are lots of micronutrients, vitamin K, and other substances, folate, that are found in plant substances that are important for bone health. Don't be fooled to think you can have strong bones just by popping calcium pills. You have to take calcium in the form you've been intended to take it by nature. And that's from green vegetables and beans and fresh fruits and nuts and seeds. When you eat a vegetable-based diet, it will radically lower your cholesterol and prevent you from ever having a heart attack. Nobody in this room will ever have to have a heart attack, yet it kills 50% of all Americans. And if you have heart disease already, you can reverse it and still not have a heart attack. The medical journal Metabolism studied my Eat to Live program and they put people on a vegetable diet, a vegetable based diet with nuts and fruit. They found that the average person dropped their LDL cholesterol 
by 33% in six weeks' time. That was stronger than cholesterol-lowering drugs of 26%. See, cholesterol-lowering medication has only been shown to lower cholesterol about 25%. And you don't have the side effects, the muscle aches and the liver malfunction. And you don't have a higher... In other words, you may have some other risks from taking the drugs, and, you're not gonna, and that's going to lower your risk of heart disease. But when you eat correctly, it drops your cholesterol, and all the phytochemicals and antioxidants totally re remove the possibility of a person having a heart attack. It's the mechanism it works is not only via the cholesterol lowering of mechanism. There are other factors that you need for good health besides cholesterol lowering that you don't get when you take the drug. The most effective way to protect yourself against heart disease is to follow a high nutrient style of eating with vegetables to base, which I call my Eat to Live program. It's a diet style. It's not a diet. It's a style of eating. A diet connotates something that you do just to lose weight, where you have to weigh and measure foods. This isn't about weighing portions of food and eating less food. It's about eating more of the right foods. I'm on a crusade to get as many people as we can eating a very healthy diet so we can... So nobody need to have a heart attack. I mean, I could have written a book to sold millions of books, but this is not a popularity contest. It's not a beauty contest. It's not about making an extra dollar by selling an extra book like the South Beach Diet. Where, they, where this cardiologist prostituted himself to sell extra books, trying to tell people that they're, going to lower, that they're going to help their heart by eating a diet rich in animal products and saturated fat to make himself a popular book, telling people what they want to hear. That disturbed me greatly to see a cardiologist doing that, giving people a diet that he knows is going to kill people as a cardiologist. You can't lower your cholesterol on a diet like that. I want to know that when people read my book, Eat to Live, that if that one person reading my book who has heart disease or whose father died of heart attack at age 45, which happens every day, I had a person two, three houses down from me who just died of a heart attack at age 38 with two little daughters at home. Happens all, every day. Do so you know that 76% of on-the-job deaths for firemen are caused by heart attacks, not accidents or fires? Most firemen die of heart attacks. Most Americans die of heart attacks. So as you can see by this slide, a low-fat vegetarian diet, like, a, like one advocated by some of the famous, well-known vegetarian authors, dropped cholesterol about 16%. But they did not have a favorable effect on the LDL-HDL ratio. And it also raised, in many cases, raised, raised triglycerides. It was not those people still lose weight, lower their cholesterol, and protect their health when they move from a vegetarian diet to the Eat to Live program because they're cutting out more of the high-calorie, low-nutrient foods like white potato, white rice, pasta, and bread. Those starch-based or potato-based programs, when you have a diet based on potatoes and rice, those were great to feed large populations because they're cheap foods. But we're not talking about here. But if you want to know what's ideal, if you really want to know what's the most favorable diet to afford yourselves the opportunity in human history to live longer than ever before, it's not basing your diet on potatoes or rice. It's basing your diet instead on an assortment of vegetables. Where the, and using the lower carbohydrate vegetables and putting them into the unlimited category so those are the foods you eat more volume of than the higher carbohydrate vegetables. The high olive oil Mediterranean diet did not, does not show a significant lowering of cholesterol. The Mediterranean diet, which includes olive oil, lots of red sauces, more fruits and vegetables than Americans eat, has been shown to lower heart attack rate by about 30% over the heart attack rate that's in America. But within a million and a half people dying of heart attack every year, with a person dying of a heart attack every 30 seconds, what good is, do you want a lower heart attack rate? 30%? Do you want to take your risk and bring it just down by a third? Not me. I don't want to be running for a bus, skiing down a mountain slope, out there sprinting for a tennis ball, and be nervous when I have a heart attack or if something happened to me. I want to know with 100% certainty I want to drop that heart attack rate 100%. I want nobody to have a heart attack. We don't want to just make us... You follow what I'm saying? The Mediterranean diet is not a favorable diet. And the, don't fool yourself. The people in the Mediterranean countries today are eating the same diet we are in America. 
Sure, 30 years ago in Crete, or 50 years ago, they ate better than we did. And they also you know, maybe worked behind a plow eight hours a day doing heavy labor. Now they work in office buildings on computers and eat donuts and junk food and bagels, just like you guys. I wanted to spend a little time just demonstrating that the same diet that's linked to heart disease and cancer also causes all the other illnesses too that brings you into the hospital or to see doctors. Headaches, migraines, hemorrhoids, stomach pain, reflux esophagitis, asthma, allergies. In other words, when you, eat, when you overeat and when you eat a diet low in nutrients, your immune system is weak and you have yourself ready to pick up every disease that walks around the corner. Kidney stones, gallstones, fibroids, appendicitis is linked to high animal product intake, kidney failure. These things just don't, we see thousands of people suffering and dying every year. We have a medical health care crisis in this country and our economy to a large extent is suffering greatly because of the health care crisis due to people eating themselves to death with their knives and forks. They're digging their graves with their knives and forks in this country. We have to have some radical change. Can you, you know that the, the percent of, you know, the, the average amount of money being spent on our health care dollar in America is going up by, a, by such a high rate that's going to bankrupt most of the major corporations in America. And the small companies can't afford to, to pay for health care anymore. And you're told by the government and by authorities to take lots of extra calcium each day, right? So if you're a woman, take 1,500 milligrams of pills of calcium every day. Well, of course you have to. Because when you eat a diet so rich in animal products and so rich in salt and so rich in caffeine, and you're going to cause, you're going to lose that calcium. Let's imagine you, had, you took in 1,000 milligrams of calcium via your diet or through pills today. You don't absorb all of that about two-thirds of it goes into your stool. Only about a third of it gets absorbed into your bloodstream. So you took in a thousand, about 300 milligram goes into your blood. Now, in this 24-hour period, you urinate out 350 milligrams of calcium. Wow, you urinated out more than you took in. That's, a called, that's called a negative balance. You lost 50 for the day. If you lose a little bit each day, that calcium has to come from somewhere. And where do you think it came from? the storehouse of calcium in your body, the bones. Osteoporosis is inevitable. On the other hand, countries around the world who don't have osteoporosis consume much less calcium than we do in America. The countries with the highest calcium intake have the highest hip fracture rate. So let's say you ingest just 500 milligrams today. Well, you absorb a higher percent. You absorb about 200. Two-fifths is a bigger fraction than three, because than, two-fifths is equal to four-tenths, right? And four-tenths is bigger than three-tenths, or th or th so you absorb a bigger fraction. And if you excreted only 100 in the urine, then you'd be in a positive balance for 100. Worldwide osteoporosis is not l correlated with how much calcium you take in. It correlates impeccably well with the calcium excretion in the urine. And the calcium excretion in the urine is caused by a high intake of salt and animal protein, caffeine, and sugar. Also, vitamin A supplements. When you take multivitamins with vitamin A in it, you lose a lot of extra calcium in the urine. And the vitamin A also increases your risk of heart attack and cancer. It's best to get our carotenoids and, and vitamins, the carotenoids and the vitamin A family, directly from the natural foods like fruits and vegetables. Not to be thinking that everybody in America eats, eats a vegetable list diet and try to take extra beta carotene, which will then lower your blood level of lutein or lycopene. Let me say that again. If you're taking vitamin A or even high dose beta carotene from a vitamin pill, that will compete with absorption of lutein and lycopene and other carotenoids and lower your blood levels. It won't make for that diverse assortment of nutrients that you need from natural foods. Calcium is rich in natural foods, in green vegetables, you guys are loaded with calcium. But you're not just getting calcium, you're getting all the other factors that are so essential for your bones and for your overall health. So milk doesn't have anywhere near the calcium intake as vegetables. How do you think the cow got the calcium to get into the milk anyway? Right? They didn't feed the cow milk to get the calcium. They fed it greens. As animal product intake goes up in a country, we see so does the hip fracture rate. 
and as it goes down, hip fracture osteoporosis melts away. Protein per calorie is highest, by the way, in peas and lentils and tofu and broccoli and leafy green vegetables. Those foods are high protein foods. They have more protein per calorie than a cheeseburger and meatloaf. You're already on a diet rich in protein when you're eating your vegetables. But when you're eating your vegetables, you can't overeat because your stomach is only holds a liter of food. How much vegetables do you think could fit in there with before it burst open? The thing is, is that you, you can eat, you don't have to worry about how much food you eat when you eat correct foods. You can eat as much food as you like. You don't have to measure the food and weigh it. Throw in all the healthy foods in there. Eat as much as you can out of those foods. One reason Americans are so obese is because they're eating fake food, food that doesn't grow on a tree. Foods you can't eat if you were shipwrecked on Gilligan's Island. You don't see a bottle of olive oil and a, and a plastic bag of Wonder Bread growing on a tree on Gilligan's Island, do you? See, that's how you know Skipper didn't really live on the island. The calorie ratios of common foods so that beans and fruits and green and vegetables have around 200 calories per pound on the average. It's, you can't fit that many calories into your stomach when you're putting in beans, fruits, and green vegetables. They're the foods that are highest in nutrients, yet at the same time, they're exceptionally low in calories. The trick, the secret of this plan are to, is to eat lots of these foods, the beans, the fruits, and the green vegetables, more than the starchy vegetables and whole grains. To eat more greens and beans and fresh fruit to form the majority of what you eat. That's the secret to extending your lifespan and achieving your ideal weight. Thank you very much. I'll hang around for any more in the back. Thank you so much, Dr. Furman. I'm sure you've inspired many of us. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org.